Welcome to the Family Law Channel. Justin Bieber is prepared to take a DNA test to prove he is not the fa father of Mariah Yeeter's uh, baby. Uh, my guest here on the Family Law Channel is its beloved host, uh, retired Judge Eugene M. Hyman from the Superior Court in Santa Clara, California. Judge Hyman, welcome back. Thank you. We are uh, talking about paternity here, but there's all kinds, because of the ages, when this allegedly happened, there's all kinds of other issues at bay here. So let's let, let's talk about first, um, I, I suppose, the fact that if indeed he turns out to be the father and he was 16 at the time and she is 20, what does that mean? Well, uh, under certainly under California law, and I believe the age of consent in most states uh, is 18, some are 16, but assuming that he was in the in a state with the age of consent was 18, and and the uh, woman is um, a couple of years older, then she could be guilty of unlawful intercourse, and which could either be charged as a felony or a misdemeanor at the discretion of the prosecutor. The fact that he allegedly, if willing, would not make it uh, a crime. Uh, would not uh, negate the fact that it would still be a crime. Um, it would probably influence uh, the judge with respect to and the prosecutor in terms of whether it was to be treated as a felony or misdemeanor, and it would be a mitigator with respect to the consequences in the event that it was found to be a crime, but it would not uh, change the fact that um, a person under the age of consent cannot consent. One of the concerns that I have is that the media are referring to this as statutory rape, and I believe that that uh, term, while used uh, frequently, is really it really does a disservice to actual rape. Uh, this is not a crime of rape. Uh, it is statutory or, or unlawful intercourse. Uh, it is not uh, statutory rape. Rape um, is a, a specific term that suggests uh, intercourse occurring without consent. Um, but there remains uh, several additional uh, issues. In theory, if he was willingly participating, then he'd be guilty of a crime um, because it's not um, lawful uh, for him to participate. Um, <clears throat> in theory, um, my experience in, in juvenile um, system was that if you had uh, two teenagers that were, say, within two years of one another, and they were both under the age of 18, mm -hmm. even if a parent objected to the fact, as long as it was consensual, it was extremely rarely prosecuted, maybe if the person became pregnant. Um, prosecuting a juvenile for unlawful intercourse um, has the potential for, for having everlasting consequences. Even though a juvenile record can be uh, sealed, um, it's not really ex expunged for all purposes. And those in the government uh, having access to these kinds of things, mm -hmm. invariably, my experience has been, find out that a person has suffered uh, some kind of a criminal conviction, especially if they are initially convicted of a felony. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> next issue is whether he voluntarily had uh, sex or not, there's the potential uh, for child support. And so even even if uh, two people uh, have, uh, have voluntarily, uh, consensually are having sex, and if there's a child involved, um, paternity should be established and child support is going to be offer, uh, ordered, uh, whether the individual was uh, initially able to pay it or not. Judge, is there, is there any, uh, speaking about child support here, because uh, if, if he were uh, proven to be the father and he was 16 at the time, does his age at the time of that, does that affect his ability to pay child support? No, it's based upon it's based upon literally his ability and the fact that he's extremely wealthy, mm -hmm. which could be a motivating factor in all this. It right. means that he has the means to pay child support. If it in fact is his child, he's going to be paying child support based upon his ability to pay, plus based upon um, the contact to the extent that he has contact with the child, because that's one of the factors that's considered because to the extent that he has contact and he's paying less support because mm -hmm. in theory he's supporting the child when the child's with him. So I'm, I'm guessing, um, uh, especially based if you're someone who is a, a well-known entertainer and you live in Los Angeles, 
w would it be safe to say that uh, this kind of thing is probably not that uncommon, is that there's allegations sometimes that we never hear about? And two, what is his, um, what is his obligation to take a paternity test? Well, those are all very good uh, questions that are difficult to answer. Um, it would depend upon the, the potential pleadings in a particular case. I could see potentially a situation where a judge might not order mm -hmm. a paternity testing. Just because someone has filed a petition alleging that you're the father <clears throat> doesn't mean necessarily that the judge has to order a paternity test. The other thing that a lot of people uh, may not realize, let's assume hypothetically that a person takes a paternity test and it comes back 99.99% uh, that this person is likely to be the father of the child. Mm -hmm. That does not guarantee that, in fact, that that is the legal determination that is made. And in order for a paternity test to have validity, by its very nature, the, the fact finder, usually a judge, has to make a determination that this person had, and this is a legal term, access. If a judge were to determine, based upon the fact-finding uh, principle in terms of um, whether who he believed or who the judge believed, and if he believed that uh, the particular uh, accused father did not have intercourse, then it could be 100%. It's not going to happen because mm -hmm. that's a condition precedent that's required. Right. Well, we appreciate your thoughts and, again, your insight uh, in this issue. And we'll follow it as best we can, Judge. Thank you so much. Thank you.